Well, I'm going to uh, begin, uh, Lee, just by asking, of course, there's 20 books in the, mm. in this series. Uh, why do you think they chose this particular one? And were you involved in that decision? Well, we talked, yeah, we talked for years about, you know, what order we should do them in. It's like uh, playing fantasy football. And um, why did they choose this one? I think because it pairs, or rather trios, Reacher with uh, two other really strong alpha characters who happen to be women. And it gives him a whole new dynamic. It's, he's not a lone wolf anymore. He's, he, he's with two other lone wolves. And somehow... They've got to figure out how to get along while solving the problem. And that produces a really interesting dynamic that it's a story of its own, really, how these three people get along in uh, ex ex circumstances of you know, extreme peril and pressure. So are you able to look over the, the sort of 20 novels and just go, right, that's the one that would work great, that one wouldn't be so great on screen. I mean, do you, when you sort of finish them, do you instantly think, oh, that was the one that would just lend itself so well to the big screen? No, I, I usually finish them and think, this is impossible to adapt, you know, and they, they, it gives them a big problem because Reach is a very silent guy. A lot of it's internal monologue, and um, they've got to find a way of putting that on screen. So really, I, I think, I love I loved them as books, and then I think, well, it's a big problem to adapt them, but fortunately, these are experts. And uh, when, after the, 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 the original Jack Reacher movie, which came out, obviously, a sort of couple of years ago has that have you changed your approach to writing the character since if you kind of do you find that you're more you visualize it a bit more now you've seen it kind of realized on the big screen no i i always did see it very visually because uh, i used to work in television and so i you know to me it's always a visual thing and i'm when i'm writing it it's almost as if i'm just reporting what i'm seeing in front of my eyes so that i haven't changed a bit so when you visualize the character now in your mind do you see tom cruise no i still see the same sort of amorphous ugly reacher that i used to i mean and that's a problem with adaptation to me reach is pretty ugly and it's very hard to find movie stars who are ugly and um it must be quite sort of surreal and slightly overwhelming just to know that, I mean, Tom Cruise is one of the biggest action heroes ever, to know mm. that he's kind of playing a character that you created. It's overwhelming that he wants to, yeah. I mean, nobody's forcing him to. He's doing it because he wants to, and that is a huge compliment, and I, and I love that. And I also love the, the respect that he gives the character. I mean, the whole production just gives this character tremendous respect, and that's a really nice feeling. And in the first film, you had a slight, a small cameo. Mm -hmm. from, uh, can we expect to see you uh, pop up in this one? Oh yeah, and it, in in a very sort of parallel role because, and it's Tom Cruise's idea that I, I must always be in a role that is somehow in authority judging him, because again, that's a mark of respect towards the character. The author is lending the character to the actor for the duration of the movie, and so you actually see that transaction on the screen. And do you spend a lot of time on the set of these movies as well? I do. I mean, I, they're a bunch of great people. They're good fun to hang with. And so I go down as often as I can. And yeah, I love watching it happen. It's an, a very inspiring thing. There are hundreds of people working with great precision and, and great expertise very hard and it's good to watch yeah it must be quite humbling as well to see that many people kind of come together and work this hard on something that sort of came out of your brain yeah no and it's, it's such a mismatch because I sit there and it cost me nothing to write you know they went into a diner these guys have got to actually build the yeah. diner you know it, it, it's really tremendous and I just I mean is it quite do you get almost quite Pressures. Or do you, I mean, do you have to, did you have to learn, particularly after the first movie, just to kind of let go, I guess? Because obviously this is your sort of baby in some mm. regards, and you've got all these people kind of offering their own uh, take on it and their own kind of ideas of what they believe the character to be, this world to be. Have you just got to kind of step back and go, this is their job now? Yeah, and I'm the least worried person in the world about it, because in my mind it's perfectly clear that the book is the book and the movie is the movie. The movie doesn't replace the book. It kind of comments on it. It's a version of it. The writers always worry, what are they going to do to my book? And the truth is, they do nothing to your book. Your book is still there. This is a parallel project. So I'm completely relaxed about it. They can do what they like. And are you, uh, are you able just to sit down and watch these films with popcorn and just enjoy them? Or are you sort of scrutinising over certain elements and areas of the film? I, I'd love to watch any movie over and over again because you pick up things that you haven't seen. This one I've already seen twice and I'm going to see it for a third time tonight. And I'm going to really enjoy it, yeah. So what's the future of Jack Reacher for you? I mean, how, how much sort of how much longer can we expect to see this this character? How many more books have you kind of got in your in your mind? Well, I, I feel that the writer is the servant of the reader, and so if there, if there's demand from from the reader, if they say we want another one, then I'll I'll give them another one. When the reader says, you know what, we've had enough of this, then I'll retire and go live on the beach. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about the the new book quickly. It's Night School, which is mm. out quite soon. Uh, what can we expect of Reacher in uh, in this new? Uh, it's the prequel. It's set 20 years ago, so Reacher's a younger man still in the army, and um, He's got a problem to sort out in Hamburg, Germany. Somebody's been overheard saying, the American wants $100 million. And that's all they know. What American? What for? Uh, you know, it's, it's a problem.
So just very quickly, I mean, obviously, if it's a prequel set 20 years earlier, it means Tom Cruise couldn't play it. Who would you like to see play this uh, this uh, new Jack Reacher on screen? I don't know. If they ever get around to that, it'll be maybe somebody hasn't even been born yet. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much for your time today. Much Cheers. appreciated. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!